In this video, I'd like to look at an Android app that includes a sensor, in particular an accelerometer. The code can be found at the URL C. Okay, so this app here is the emulation of the app. We have the in accelerometer, the output has an X, Y, and Z component. Most of it is in the Y direction, which is vertical, and uh, there's none in the X and a little bit in the Z at the moment. So for the emulator, you can affect its uh, positioning and its movement uh, by going to this ellipsis button at the bottom here, and then there are additional sensors which we can look at another time. And then this is the one, here's the, the tab that affects the uh, accelerometer. So we can rotate our phone. So right now we are at zero Z, X, and Y. Uh, well, we're not exactly at zero in the X. Okay, now we are. Okay, so now we have, uh, we're at zero on the Z, X, and Y rotations. If we uh, rotate it a little bit in the Z direction, then we see what, what effect that has on the phone. So the Z axis is coming out at you and you are rotating about it. And so here you see the sort of more general angles in, in the sort of emulated phone. We only see the sort of strict vertical or horizontal, but we have the sort of in-between values here. Okay, and then we see the effect it has that this rotation around the Z gives that, that thing that was sort of all in the vertical direction, all in the Y, 9.8 meters per second squared is the unit here. And that is the acceleration due to gravity. Um, but if we rotate a little bit, uh, that takes some of it out of the Y direction and some of it into the X. The X direction rotation is the, the X is along sort of a horizontal and we're sort of tilting the phone forward or tilting it back. And that is producing, taking some of the Y was all Y when we're and moving it into the Z. Okay. And then if we are rotating around the Y, the Y is the vertical axis. So we're just sort of swiveling the phone one way or the other. And that's not affecting the component because the component is vertical and this is not changing what is vertical for our phone. So that is the sort of rotation. We can also sort of move the phone. And so that we can, and you don't have to watch sort of while I move the phone. When I'm moving the phone uh, is when it's sort of accelerating. And then once I stop, then I will stop accelerating. And so, so to see any effect, so I will should see some effect if I'm moving along the x-axis. I should see as I'm beginning and ending some acceleration in this x direction. Okay. So I sort of and there's if I change it in the Z. I'll see a little Z 
And in the Y, I would only see whatever I see would be a little bit of change to the 9.8. So you'll be looking sort of way down here in the, in the digits for any change. Okay. And sort of, it depends how fast you change it, et cetera, because it's an acceleration. Okay, so this sensor uh, senses the motion of the phone or the sort of uh, verticality of the phone. Is it sort of completely vertical or is it uh, slant tilted in some way or other? So that's what the uh, this accelerometer does for you. Okay, now let's see how we code this. Okay, so the activity main, the XML, there's not much to it. It's just three text views to display the X, the Y, and the Z component. The main activity, I have this comment up here. This is very uh, important that we, this is what's normal, normally here for an app main activity, sort of uh, extending app compat activity. But now we're adding to the list here of a sensor event listener. Okay, sort of without, without adding that, a lot of the code below is it's going to say, what are you talking about without that? So that's a very important addition uh, for these sensors, okay. Now, when we add that, it is going to insist that we do more than just on create. So a lot of our code often ends up just on create, but when you have a sensor event listener, it's going to insist on having a resume, a pause, a sensor changed, and then on accuracy change. It will insist on you having these methods. And so, we want, uh, not everything's going to live in on create. And so we want to declare our variables sort of more at a class or global level than just within on create. But uh, I'm going to be uh, connecting to the, the interface and the interface doesn't exist until it's created. So I, I want them, I want these things to be declared at the class level, but to be initialized at the create level. And so that's where this uh, late init comes. So we, a lot of the variables will want to be declared and initialized uh, in, one, in one swoop. And this late init word is telling us that that's not going to happen, that we are going to, we're declaring it, but we'll initialize it uh, at another time. So private, late init, var, sensor manager. So when you work with the sensor, you also work with a sensor manager. So we'll have another example later where we will work with two sensors and then, but we will have one sensor manager. So when we work with sensors, we have a sensor manager and then sensor or sensors. In this case, we're only gonna work with one sensor, the accelerometer. But so we're declaring a manager, we're declaring an accelerometer and we're uh, declaring those three text views. Um, the late init says we're going to initialize them later. So now here we are in on create and we are connecting code to interface. And so now here's the initialization of TVX, TVY, TVZ. Here we're getting the sensor manager. And then here we're getting our particular sensor from the sensor manager. And we're specifying that we want the accelerometer type of sensor. So that was what we had in on create. It will insist again, it's going to, if you have sensor event listener and you don't have these other methods, it's going to be sort of yelling at you. Um, so it needs these methods. Um, so it wants an on resume, an explicit on resume method. And first you're going to have your normal on resume stuff. 
and then your particular stuff with the sensor manager. So you are going to, when you're resuming, when you're starting again, then you want to sort of get the sensor going again. So on the pause, we are unregistering the sensor manager. We're saying, I, you know, forget the sense, you know, forget the sensors, the person's not looking at the phone, not looking at this app. There's no sense in having these sensors using up that resource. Um, so that's the on pause, the unregistering, on resume, sort of you know, re-registering the listener and saying, I want my accelerometer sort of in play again. This is when the sensor changes, then this event gets called. Um, I'm putting in here a, a when, and you'll see that will have more importance when we look at the example with multiple sensors, but the, the, the manager manages uh, more than one kind of sensor. So we are asking, uh, the sensor sends us, we, we are called to this uh, on sensor manager by some change in a sensor, some event, and we're asking the event, what kind of sensor it was, what kind of, what, what type it was. And if it was of the accelerometer type, then we are going to, then the event has value. So the event has a sensor property and the event has values property. It's not always zero, one, two, zero, one, and two, but this particular sensor, I'm um, in this if, uh, or this case statement, this when, and I know then I'm of the accelerometer type. So I know that values then is an array with three components, uh, zero, one, and two, and they are the X, the Y, and the Z components. And I am displaying them along with some label here. And that sort of also serves the purpose of casting it as a string for me to make it text. And then here's a method that, uh, Again, you must have, but I don't want to particularly to do anything there, but I must have it. So I have override function on accuracy changed and I'm not doing anything, but I must have it or it will complain. So that is the example that I wanted to show you with a sensor. Remember to add the sensor event listener here that you are going to have not just an on create, but an on resume, an on pause, an on sensor change, and on accuracy changed. That pushed us towards this sort of late init approach. And, and we'll see in another example where the manager comes in and the win comes in a little bit more uh, in more detail when we have two sensors. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you in this example. Thank you.